and good morning, golfing world all over the place, probably 50-plus countries this morning. It is Monday Morning Golf Wrap here on TGD Radio and TV with Hugh Roy III. I'm George Honeycutt, and Hugh, I am blessed today, really blessed. We have the Pope of Grand Strand Golf in with us. We have, Mr. I have been blessed. We have the man. Before we finish this program today, we will witness him walking on water. <laughs> Can I leave now? <laughs> <laughs> nice to be here, George. Good morning, Professor. Good How morning. are you? Good morning. It's so good to have you. Thank you, sir. Hadn't seen you since yesterday. Yeah, two days in a row. Yeah. I'm blessed. That's all it is. I'm blessed. I guess I am, too. So, and seeing you here, double. I appreciate it. That really wow. means something. The beauty of it is my wife usually watches just to see me on here and see how bad I look or if I look acceptable. But you're on here, so she won't even pay attention to me now. So, oh my God. Professor, would you do me a favor later this week? Call and leave me a message and remind me to bring him a new hat. I'm so tired of this one. It's unreal. So, we'll get him a new hat. Oh, he got mad at me the other day. Just, you know, they had Nick come on and do the tech. Callaway ball. was here. Callaway was here. And you wore that hat? Oh, well, yeah. It's the only hat I have. Callaway has never Can you say D A? <laughs> Can you say D A? No, there's no D A. There was a purpose behind the madness. Oh, yeah. You want a new hat? Okay. You want a, no, <laughs> he, he wants more than a new hat. <laughs> but I mean, that's only had a half. Red Stone gives me whatever I want. That's what I'm wearing. Wow. Okay, moving on. I mean, what are you going to do? You going to go spend forty bucks on a hat or twenty bucks on a hat? Or are you going to go? Listen, I can't say anything. I play Bridgestone balls, and I used to play Titleist all the time. Well, you're a smart man. I, wow, he is the Pope. Because you know, pretty good ball. It's a, the best I've been around in a while. Now well, Callaway took my one ball away. Well, argue <laughs> that. So, <laughs> hey guys, uh, busy weekend in golf. Let's talk a little golf while we're here. Sure. sure. Busy weekend, European tour, of course. Porsche jumping into the corporate sponsorship role for the first time. And George Congratulations was, to them. And, and George gave, away, George. gave away a bicycle. And gave away a bicycle. And George's man crush won the golf tournament. Tom Jai Jai D. Yep. <laughs> Is that correct? Yes. I was so Is it? I was so excited when he won. I'm sitting there going, Chung Jai, Chung Tai, Chung Jai. Because he loves these crazy names. This kid can play. Well, I mean, he can play. play, and it is he a crazy a night. He ain't a kid, dude. Oh, this is crazy. a this is a paratrooper from the Thai Army. I mean, the dude's been there. He's a veteran. Okay. And goes out and picks up his seventh victory. That's the neat thing. The European about, tour. That's the neat thing about this show. I had no idea. Yeah. I just thought it was a kid. And, you know. That's that's cool. Yeah. He's an old fart. He's actually up there. He's got some age. Yeah. Congratulations, Tom Jai. One of the smallest people on the European tour. Yeah. One of the shortest hitting people on the European tour. And he just goes out every week and just, I call him the Thailand ATM. He just makes money. But you're out there to win. That's right. And that's what he does. So congratulations to Tom Jai Jai D. Who edges out Graham Storm. Literally, uh, they were back and forth all the way through the last nine holes. But Tung Jai pulls it out with a birdie in, over the last three holes, and Graham just couldn't get anything to fall into the cup. I don't care if he was four feet away or 12 feet away. That thing was falling for Graham Storm. So Tung Jai ends up with the win at 17 under par. So congratulations to him. Boom, done. Porsche did a good job. They were in Germany playing. Beautiful golf course. The only green grass that was around there because of their drought. Yeah. It's amazing how many whales they can find on a golf course. <laughs> to get all the water they want. And it blows your mind because you think of all the rain that we've been having lately and then all of a sudden now you look at Europe Dude. and they're just bare. Dude, they, bare. they were given some aerial photo shots and uh, bless their heart, the farms and all the, even the wineries around there, just brown. They have gone through a massive drought in basically Germany and Austria, that area. So, but that golf course was lush. Lush. They've been throwing some water on that thing. So, hey, if it's their water, so they can do what they want to with exactly. it, I guess. So, congratulations. Uh, the whole event turned out to be well, and I think uh, it was a good uh, experience for Porsche. So, I would imagine that they will uh, continue on, and, and hopefully this turns out to be a long-term sponsorship. 
Ford Porsche. It's good to see them in it, like Mercedes and, and Volvo and the other car manufacturers and Porsches ponied up now. And really interesting was the vehicles they were displaying for the Holy Ones. Oh, I can imagine. But interestingly, they had a car on all the par threes, but it only was if you par or made a, uh, a Holy One on 17. Okay. The other par threes didn't count. The car was just there. They were just there. That's right. But you had to make it on 17. So, you know, oh, well, it would be my luck. I would be like Will, and I would birdie or make a Holy One on the first three and then miss the 17. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my luck. Will would make it, but I wouldn't. Speaking of your, your son, Will, yes. I, I had another a, a blessed moment to watch him swing for about an hour and a half yesterday. Good stuff. i got to talk about that a little bit. I, we go in, and he's giving me one of the best figs I've ever watched in my life. And he gave him 10 yards, reduced his ball spin from 4,000 down to around three, gave him another five yards, tinkering with it, Got his ball speed down to about 28, 2800. And the last time the final fit got it worked out, he sent the ball about 21 yards farther than it was carried, carried 21 yards. And his ball speed is steadily between 2800 and 2500. Spin rate. Spin, I mean, spin rate. rate. Spin rate. It's good. I mean, it's see, I tell you, I didn't know a whole lot about it. Until no, it. you're good. But, but I mean, thank you. And Gene, no offense, you know. It, as much as I hate to admit it, he, he is the best. I agree. He's the best. Uh, it's hard for me to say that and not vomit all over the well, counter, he, but he, the thing that got me is the that truth. He, he went is in, that good. He went into a professional mode, and I'm just sitting there watching. Oh, he's it's a totally different person. Yeah. He's, he's, George is very, very good. But he, he is. Was, and he's good with the people. It makes them comfortable. He gets them in there, and he just starts going, okay, give me this. And the next thing he knows, you can go. I just sit well, back. thank you guys. That's I sit back very nice of you. You laugh? I, because you laugh at me every day. Dude. But it doesn't matter. I'm, I laugh in a good way because it's the watching you do your job and how good you are at, at making these people comfortable and getting them in the right thing. And well, I not everyone that. can do that. Well, he called me three times yesterday. He said, when did he say the driver was coming in? When's it coming in? Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. Did he really? Oh, yeah. Good for him. He's awesome. Actually, if you'll let him know, the driver's actually being delivered to him. Okay. I checked on it yesterday, so I put his address in as the delivery boy. So it's coming to him, and then he'll just bring it over and we'll tune it up. Okay. It. So, All right. Good, good stuff. Uh, thanks for your comments, both of you. Um, I don't know whether to kiss you or kick you, one of the two. That's what friends do. Either or. I'll be getting it back reciprocal and sevenfold, no <laughs> doubt about it. Um, also going on this weekend, I hope you had the opportunity. Another tournament out at the Monterey Peninsula. Of course, uh, we got to watch the Champions Tour visit out there and play Poppy Hills and, and of course, Pebble Beach. And uh, they had the first tee kids with them. Yep. Another great event. Um, some really good first tee players. Oh, yeah. There oh, were some good kids out there. There's some kids that can play good. There's a young man. For, I wish I knew his name. I tried to bring it up this morning. I couldn't find it. 14 years old, and he set up a hybrid on 18 and just went for the green for two. He just says, you know, what ocean? What clubhouse? I don't see anything. I just see green. Right. So, hey, it was fun watching. The old guys kind of started beating up on one another. And Esteban just came out of nowhere. Colin Montgomery all of a sudden started tripping over his own feet. He ended up making bogey on 17 and just kind of threw himself right out of the mix there. But who's coming from behind? The man that shot 65 second round. Who's coming from behind? What did he shoot yesterday? 67. And Watson, Pebble. Watson can play. Tom Watson comes out of nowhere, and he's in the clubhouse standing at the top of 18 green at Pebble with a little smirk grin on his face saying, Okay, boys, don't sneeze because I'm here. I'm already in. I've signed the card. He's don't sneeze. And Esteban almost sneezed. He almost sneezed. Did you see the shot he hit on 17, the par three? He no. blows it. He blows it so far right, they've got to stop play coming off of 18 tee box because he's sitting right next to the tee box. That's how far right he missed the green. It's a marvelous shot. 
chip back over, but you can't get it close to that pin when it's over the far left-hand side. It ends up growing past 20 feet. He makes a bogey. All of a sudden now, his lead's one, and Colin is standing on the tee box. And what does Colin do? He tries to get a five iron all the way back there far left, and it ain't happening. So he flails it right. So Wasser's just standing up there with his arms crossed, just going, what do they do? You know, let's see what they do. <laughs> but Esteban pulls it off, so he ends up winning by one. And congratulations to him. I, mean, I know you talk highly of him every time we speak about him. And, uh, you know, you always mention he's one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet and things like that. So. He, he is. And he's a, it's funny, George, because, you know, he was the number one ranked. He was number one behind the champion in his weight class in boxing when he came out of high school. And I bet you didn't know that either, did you? Didn't I didn't, I didn't know it that long. He was, he was that good, and he, the doctors told him that if you get hit one more time in your nose, uh, you may die. Oh, wow. So he quit. He took, kind of took up golf. And, you know, it was funny. We used to tease him because I used to ask him, I said, do you ever hit a solid shot when you play golf? Because it's almost like every shot he hits is thin. Yeah. He sounds it. It looks yeah. it. You know, yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. And we were in Callaway Gardens one year, and, and Heather – Staying in the cottages, and I didn't, I didn't tell you about the banquet because we won't get into it about 35 minutes, right? So we all get together at night, we cook out, and everybody would have a few beers or whatever, you know, and just kind of hang out. Well, Leanne got to be the, the popular one because they'd have her do stuff. Like she'd get drinks, or she'd get this, or do that, or she'd do her little dance and draw the different thing, you know. And well, I think she clipped Esteban for about 20 bucks that night. No kidding. <laughs> I mean, he had it was, and so she and Esteban got to be. So it, it's a very close knit group out there, but I got to be very close with him, and to see him win, you know, means a lot. And see Woody play well, you know, it's nice. It's nice to see that. So you know, it, it's you know, these are old friends, and it's like we were talking earlier. You were talking, you know, why aren't you going to get out as soon as I get healthy? I'm going. I mean, I've had two of my buddies call me to tell you, you know, so you go to tour school. You know, you got you got uh, till Wednesday for the discount, and then you got till the 14th to get in it. But if I'm not healthy, I'm not going. Baby Huey, I'm sitting here looking at scores of 80, 76, 72, and they get a check. Hell, you shoot that left-handed with one arm and, and gout in your left foot. Oh, I understand. But if I'm going to do it, Come I'm going to do it. I'm going 100%. I'm not going at 65% or something. I'm, whatever. I'm just saying, I got too much. I got family. I got to do it. Like, that's understandable. If okay. I want to do it, it's going to be right. All right. Heather, we need to talk about this. So give me a call. I think it's a dinner, just you and I. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's let's get to the big tournament that uh, happened this weekend. And, of course, over the last week or so, it, the Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola, of course, at East Lake, uh, uh, one of my favorite courses in the whole world. Uh, I've played it many, 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 many times. But um, a tournament that we saw one Hendrick Stinson basically go out from the get-go and was just setting some record paces with his scores on Thursday and Friday that people were going, my goodness, he could win this by 20. And it was one Jordan Spieth camp that just said, look, hang in there. Because if you watched him play, and HR, you and I discussed this briefly on Thursday and Friday, you watched him play Thursday and Friday, and it was almost like he couldn't even, it was tough for him to make a par. You know, he was struggling. He, he just he didn't seem to be able to get it in the hole. But what he was doing was he was missing every green. But then he was 21 for 25 ups and downs through Saturday. And around there, that's impressive. Right? Through Saturday. Especially that rough. Yeah. And then he commented now on Saturday and again Sunday evening about his comfort with the putting surfaces how it was the same grains that he grew up on and that he just felt good. The young man made 460 feet of putts over four days. 460 feet. I'm lucky if I hit 4.6 feet of putts. Yeah, I understand that. But, I mean, you look at it this way, Corbin. We talked about this the other day. I mean, Jason Day was doing the same thing when he was on. You know, he was making 40-footers like they were 6 footers. I mean, the thing about this is, Stinson gave him the most utmost confidence yesterday. He 
said, Jordan speak is mentally tough, but is the best putter on the PGA Tour. He's definitely the best between 2015 and 2015. And coming in that, he said he meant it as mental, his mental outlook, the way he concentrates, looks at it, and, and executes. He said he's the best out there. Well, it was definitely, it wasn't his long game. He wasn't hitting the driver all that great. I mean, we saw him on Saturday in the rain, flail it right, hollering for it not to get by that tree. And I've been that, right beside that tree many times. And he's right. He didn't want to be by that tree. And thankfully, it came up a little short and left of the tree and gave him a shot. But uh, he, he seemed to be struggling with his approach shots. He just, come on, Jordan, he seemed to be hooding everything and pulling it a little bit or he'd hit it out and hit it high and fat. Um, you know, but doggone it, you put the wedge in his hand and then put the flat stick in his hand. It was like up and down, up and down. And it, it, he kicked into survival mode early, if you want to call it that. He, he figured, I just, let me make pars. Let me make pars. And, and I think that's what, it's like you've heard me say it to my students a thousand times. It's go out and hit the middle of the green and make par and watch how many 15 footers are starting to come. Mm -hmm. You know, you take the stress off of you as far as making pars and you know you all you just hit a putt. If it goes in great, if not, you tap it in and move on. All of a sudden, it gets easy. And that's kind of the way it went with him. And the way I look at it, it's like Daddy used to say, you know, he who plays the best may not be necessarily the one that hit it the best, but whose bad shots are the least bad. Mm -hmm. And he never put himself in a predicament. Well, we saw that with Jason today. Day. I mean, Thursday, Jason starts off birdie, birdie, birdie. Okay. Yeah. Then he pars four. Then he gets on five. And what's he do? The only place you can't, and it's almost impossible to hit it here on five, and that is down the right-hand side in those woods. And just a couple of years ago, the course, because of the fence line there, they don't want their members or their guests, as I would be a guest if I was there, they don't want their members or guests even walking up to those woods. It's a security issue. Yes. Okay. So they put out-of-bound stakes there. And literally the out-of-bound stakes, you have the fairway, you have the, the cut of rough, and that rough is only about 10 feet wide and then starts pine straw trees, and the out-of-bound markers are there, the pine straw. Jason's got 500 yards left that he could have sent that drive out on and hit the left-hand side of the fairway. What does he do? He rears back with that driver, and it goes absolutely where he had not even thought about planning to put it. Did we mention the fact he was using the two driver? That's fine, but it doesn't matter. He, he That was his decision. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter manufacturer. It doesn't matter what it looked like, white with black top. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to mention the initials, but it was tailor-made. And <laughs> <laughs> the point is, he sprayed one like he, we haven't seen him spray it in six months. Okay, he's been the best driver of the ball. He's been the strongest, most fairways hit, most greens in regulation. He's number one player in the world. And then all of a sudden he makes a triple bogey. And that was it. The tournament was over. Yeah, the beer went out. Just you could see it. You could see it. He's walking back up six. And he almost throws it in the water on six. And he's walking back up six, and all of a sudden, where his shoulders was like he was doing the prance like he does, then all of a sudden you see him slump. And guess what? Guess who he was playing with? Jordan. Jordan. George Jordan. Almost, Jordan almost hit it in the water on six. Sure it did. It came up in the rough, and thankfully it did, because yeah. the tournament could have been totally different there. Well, that. But you watch Jordan on five, on day one, he had to get up and down for par. I mean, he was working his tail off. He well, did it on four. Well, that's no what offense. Offense. That's a par five. <laughs> I've been making that hole a par four is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. They talked about it this week, Jordan, Stenson, Day, every one of them, about how this is the worst golf hole out there. And it's because it's it's built as a par five. It's, it, that's the way it was designed. It's the way it used to be. Yeah. I mean, the green is is not large enough and the way it's contoured is not large enough and contoured the best way when you're coming in with a hybrid or a two iron or 
something really long. I mean, you're hitting, they're hitting 225 to 235 trying to get in there. But some more, some more penalties around that green, whether it be bunkering, the water, bringing in from six, however you want to do but it. But you don't want to, you don't want to even go over this green because the rough back there. I know, but I'm just saying, some of the bring some rough stuff in to where you make it a par five to where it's easy as long as you play it properly. You make a mistake, you go, you know, you can make six. Look at how many sixes and sevens were made. I mean, you know, I know what they're thinking lengthwise. Guys hit it so far. It's a, you know what? It doesn't have to be a 600-yard hole to be a par five. I agree. I agree. And, again, you could argue the same point for number 10. For the members, number 10 is a par five. I mean, that's a nasty golf hole as a par five. It's uphill. It's a three-shot hole for the amateurs. No doubt about it. Now, these guys, some of them, I mean, Stenson, for example, on Friday, he hit, he hit three wood seven iron on 10. He was 211 yards from the pin and hit seven iron uphill. Well, and, and I've learned something you know, here very recently in the summer that, you know, what you hear on television, what these guys are hitting, their seven iron is about like hitting five iron. I understand that, too. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, they, these clubs nowadays are so jacked up that, you know, you hear, well, you're hitting eight irons from two sure. to ten. I mean, sure. Dude, that eight iron is my six iron. And I love it when the amateur comes into the performance center and says, oh, I want to hit my eight iron 170 yards, or I hit it 170 yards. And then we put them on there, and they can't hit anything over 125. Yeah. You know, it's I understand what you're talking about being jacked up clubs and things like that. That's all fine. But you argue five being a par four versus a par five, you could argue ten the same way. It is the been determined that five and ten are going to play as fours because they want this golf course to play as a par oh, seventy. 70. Yeah. They want it to play as a par seventy and, because and of the yardage. And that's ridiculous. So it doesn't matter. But the way you look at it is the fifth hole being a par five makes more sense than a par four than say ten because ten. Even though it's uphill, at least it's a flat area you're hitting to. To the green. Where five, right. it slopes right to left so hard, and it's such a blind shot down that hill. You cannot see where the drive well, finishes. I mean, and the fairway's not that wide to begin with. It's just logical. Yeah. But if they make a par five, if they make a par five and make it a 72, the scores are going to go pretty darn far. Do you think they're sure going to they yeah. change that much? I don't know. Yeah. In relation to what they're, they're shooting right they now. Yeah. In relation to what they're shooting right now, you make those par fives. Is it going to change the I think, score? I think you're you're seeing the score average drop they're two, shoot the two same, and a half. They're going to shoot the same scores they're shooting right here. You think so? I would argue, but I, if you say so, well, I mean, it's just, they're you're the one who knows. They're going to be the same length, same hole. That's true, but they're just so going to have one more stroke. This? They're going to have one more. It, two it won't par. change. Two par. Two it's par. not going to change the numbers you see. Six That's right. Six right. If it plays, if it plays 4.7 stroke average, then it's going to play 4.7 whether it's par 5 or par 4. It doesn't matter. I agree with you. If they want to do this, though, what I think is they could take 15, which is the uphill par 5. That thing plays at 4.3 every tournament. Make it a par 4. Make it a par 4. Well, which one of the holes plays 600 that Stenson hit with two three? Number nine. Number two, nine. Three, no, two three nine. woods. Seriously? Number nine. Yeah. 600 and some odd yards, yeah. two three woods, middle of the green. 11 hit a perfect tee shot, be able to slow by this, and maybe have a shoot there. But he That's right. Yeah. yeah, you. I've, I've hit some really good drives from the ladies' tees at number nine. Okay. And you think you're on the – there's a bottom slope. Right at before the, the water. At the, right before the water down there. And that – and it, and it goes for 120 yards. So it's not like it's just a small shelf. The fairway flattens out, and you think you can get down that hill, but because all the fairways are soja, and they cut them all toward the tee box. So it's all into the green. All into the green when you land to drop. And so you get no roll. And you watch Stinson the other day. He's hitting that 11.8 degree three wood, okay, with a driver shaft in it. Which is 11 yards different from its driver. Isn't that what they said? About 11 yards. 7 to 11. I keep hitting the three wood. Yeah, you know, he's, 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 he's got a napon 90 gram shaft in that three wood. 90 grams. 90 grams. 90 grams. That's pretty hefty. That's, that's, a, a, that's a man's club. That's a four by four. 
Yeah. With a nail on the end of it. Yeah. He's I got, mean, he's got more loft on the, I mean, I got more loft on my driver than he does. That's right. Board. That's right. Yeah, he's playing to it. 11.8. That's where it's set up at. 11.8. And, and like you said, it's what he was sitting there carrying that thing, 295, yeah. downhill. It's, it's crazy, the distances. But, and then for him to be on a downhill slope, like you said, Pro, and then to be able to shoot it up there and get it to stop on a green in a, with the pin on that middle left where it was, yep. when he hit that approach, okay, that's an area over there about eight feet in diameter. If you don't hit that area, that ball's going over, and you're going to be in that back ravine, maybe even up in the Isaiah bushes. If you go left, you're going to be in the bunker. If you go push it right, you're in that front right bunker. You might as well get you a sandwich in a Coca-Cola while you're there because you're not getting out. I'm serious. And for him to set it in there and to walk up for an eight-footer for eagle, come on, dude. Come on, man. I've been in that fairway. I've looked at the clubhouse up there and go, how in the heck do they do this? These guys are good. But, I mean, that's just what I'm but saying. I just think, you know, that you change some of that crap. It's not going to change the scores. It changes the relationship to the par, man. It does. I agree with you. The scores are the same, spoke. and it makes it a better golf course and more enjoyable to play and for people to watch. And you maybe get more people out there. Well, see, that's why we need a tour player to explain it to us. It makes sense to me now. Well, what you would do, uh, especially if you took five, is – then that individual that's 223 out and he's going for it at two, you know, then it comes, that eagle comes into play. Right. But then it also warrants the fact if you can go and put a fairway bunker up the right or over there to the left, it's going to catch the ones that are left running that way mm-hmm. to where now it justifies having that bunker where they have to lay up in those and try to make birdie or par. Mm-hmm. Where if you put it in there now, and they hit it in there, they, it's unfair because they've got no shot. They can't get it. Well, interestingly, if you look up the hill just right of the green, and you'll see a wet area on the hill, and then it comes down in front of the green and then goes down, and there's actually a little wet. You just see the little channel in the in the soil, and it runs all the way down to the lake there on 6. And you, you go, God, you could, I guarantee you there's a spring up there. You could cut a creek right here in front of this green. And it would change this hole dramatically. I think there's a lot of but they will never do that because that wasn't in Bobby's design. No. That was, that's not written on paper. Well, so the way they changed the number six too, that wasn't in his original design. Well, that wasn't his. So I agree. That's a bunch of crap. That, I agree. Sorry, that's a bunch of crap. You know, number six is nothing like what it is. They can't do anything else to it because there's they asphalt told, right behind but, but the But they totally rebuilt it. I mean, that's a brand new golf hole. Few years and it's a good golf hole. It's ball. really good. It's, it's a good golf hole. But that wasn't in a design either, so they can't Oops. use that excuse. The, the goosebumps that creates on your gonads when you stand and up the on fact that tee box. The fact that they even changed the clubhouse yeah. Yeah. blows my mind because that was one of the prettiest clubhouses from the 1920s. All they had to do was cleaned it up, you know, just revamped it. And you got a beautiful club. That's true. Yeah, but I mean, it's gorgeous the way it is. And Fried tomatoes are phenomenal. But you got to start it talking. I mean, you know, they, it, it is what it is, and they're going to live and die with this. Yes, I they are. That's it's like so. Augusta. Yeah. But we were talking about Jordan, and here's a young man that I, I'm not going to say he won with his B game, but I'm going to say he won with his A minus game. Mm-hmm. What does that say for him as a player to be able to do that mm-hmm. in a tournament like that for that amount of money? And he doesn't have his game. He didn't have his game when he played. It says he's a lot more mature than a lot of the people that were there and that are out there on the tour. Because a young man played golf like a veteran of 20 years in his late to mid, late 30s to mid early 40s. Yep. I mean, he's he's so mature and so the way he thinks his way around that golf course is amazing. You know, he just put every doubt. I, I still don't understand this FedEx Cup and how it works. He misses two cuts. He finishes 15th in one. He wins this one, and he wins it all. Yeah. But if he's not player of the year. Oh, he is. That, that, then, then, I'm just saying, I know he is. He but is if he's not, not, then it's corrupt. Okay, so they had a wonderful year. No doubt about year, it. But he's but not player of the year. No. No. Well, we knew going in that the 
top five ranked guys, they all, if they won, they won the whole thing. So when you get 2,000 points to be winning the tour championship by Coca-Cola, that just that propels you above everybody else because the second place got 866 points. So, you know, that's 1,200 points above everybody oh, yeah, else. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's how he does it. Um, but it also allows them to have a tournament that they know is going to be. It's not going to be somebody that wins it two days out or, or two right. weeks out. Exactly. That, that's and just the draw. Just the draw. Sure. Yeah. And it's made for television. And that's exactly what it is and what it does and how it's turned out. So hats off to them. And I appreciate the fact, too. I mean, you said that they showed some salaries of some other athletes, NFL, NBA, tennis, things like that. And Jordan this year will have made, after his win yesterday, over $22 million this year. And you got people sitting on the bench playing for the Red Sox and make more money than that. Well, they do. Yeah. Yeah. And they're in a team sport, and it doesn't, you know, they can sit on that bench and collect splinters yeah. all year and still get that check. Yeah. This is the way Jordan pays the bills, because if he doesn't play well, he doesn't get paid. That's true. If he pulls out like Louis Oosthuizen did, he doesn't get paid, or he finishes dead last, like Kevin Kisner. I had to bring it up. <laughs> makes one hundred thirty-five. Though. Makes one thirty-five. I saw him. South Carolina boy had a good year. <laughs> he had a great. He sure he did. Play play good good. He and good. and and so did Daniel Berger. How about him? Last yeah. moment entry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's punching your ticket awfully late there, buddy. Yeah. But he finishes tied twelfth. Good for him. Made one hundred ninety-six thousand three hundred and fifty. Good for Kevin. Good for him. Good for him. Um, I really enjoyed Danny Lee, watching him play. Danny had a phenomenal weekend. Really good for him. Um, the person I was most interested in yesterday on the final day of the Tour Championship, I'm sitting there going, holy crap, here he comes, Justin Rose. Yeah. Uh, one of our good friends of the network here of the show and everything uh, gave me a buzz yesterday. He was on the property, and he was following this individual. And he said, I have never seen more pure ball striking over seven holes than I saw from Justin Rose. And this guy is one of the better amateurs that you know, and I know. He said, I never saw him in seven holes miss the third groove on anything. He said it was a different sound. It was a different tone. He said it was just phenomenal ball flight. He said, this guy could win. And then... Everybody hears the roars coming from 11 when Jordan makes the 35-footer, and Stinson's up there at an inch and a half, ready to tap in and, and make a charge. And Justin also heard those roars. And then it just kind of planked out from there. And everybody starts pushing. Yeah. Oh, sure they did. Stinson's approach on 17, the hosel rocket. Yeah. I'm telling Callaway, I, I mentioned it to Nick the other day, Damn it, get some grooves on that hosel. There's, the, there's those of us in the game that need it. I need some more spin coming off the hosel. So. <laughs> you got to laugh at that, dude. You got to laugh. Huh? Okay, uh, guys, let's wrap things up. Here we are. Uh, Jason started off like a house of fire, but then he backed off. He fell back. Tired, mentally drained. Who knows? It would been real easy for Jordan to do the same thing. He could at least leave Thursday and Friday and just say, look, guys, I don't have it. He could have gone to that medium press tent and said, I just don't have it. I'm burned out. But his team, his camp, his group basically convinced him, this is a major championship. You need to suck it up. Let's go out and treat this thing like a major and just play your game. And that guy over there that's playing so well, he'll come back again. And that's exactly what happened. And hats off to him. Hats off to his team. Hats off to his caddy, Michael, who through yesterday has made about $2.2 million for the year as a caddy. Good year. Not bad. Not bad. That's Boucheroni right there. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't say that, Mike. <laughs> don't do that. That's Pusheroni <laughs> money. That's Chuck and AJ money right oh, there. Oh, God, here we go. Uh, phenomenal. It just good stuff. 
Stinson played well, finished out the year great. I look for him to continue this, although he's the elder of the group. And I, I say the group, I'm talking like the Rickies and the Bubba's and the others that are in this fold now. Uh, Jeff and I were talking about this off air earlier today. I think this is the most appropriate, opportune time for Tiger to just say, enjoyed it, thanks, had a great career, thanks so much. But he won't. He won't. I know he won't. But And I think, you know, people will stop worrying about what's going on if he comes back great. If he doesn't, they're not going to worry about it. And, you know, I thought, you know, listening to, to Ernie speech the other night when he got the Pain Stewart Award and how he complimented these young stars coming up and how they're handling themselves and what they're doing with the kids and the younger generation and just fans in general, you know, they're going to do things that are going to make people forget about them. Mm-hmm. Say, forget about us. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that, but I think he's right. They are doing things. No, no, no. nobody's going to forget Tiger. He, he's historic. He's one of the better golfers ever to have lived. No, no doubt about it. No doubt whatsoever. No doubt whatsoever. But it's we have the game of golf right now is in such a place that when you go out there, any person out of a group of 15, the Tiger years are gone. And we could we could wake up and see a Ricky Fowler win. We could wake up and see a Jordan Spieth win. We could wake up and see a Jason Day win, a uh, Justin Rose, a Bubba Watson, uh, whoever. Golf's in good hands. There's no doubt right about Right now, it. it's great. It is. I if, think it if, really is. If anybody can make a run, well, they already did this year. Jordan Speed. There's no telling what that 22 years old, yeah. five tournaments won, two majors. He wins the FedEx Cup. He's going to win player of the year. It's phenomenal. If he doesn't, they need to quit on him. They, do, they don't need to have him. No, no, you're right. I agree with both of you. Um, I mean, Tiger, when he was 22, during his age of 22 in that season that he played in, he had four wins. So Jordan even outdid him with five. So Amazing. this is historic stuff, guys. Yeah, it is. And, it, and we thought in our minds that we wouldn't see something this historic for quite some time. Who was on that? I mean, just we sat here as a panel two years ago and said, you know, who's on the horizon? Who are we going to look at? Yeah. We're losing Tiger. Yeah. You know, he's having knee surgery. He's having wrist surgery. You they, know, they've answered, our, they've answered our questions for us. That's right. They've done one heck of a job. And to get to the President's Cup stuff, George, before we sign off, just to let you know, um, I told you I'd try to get in touch with Jim. I texted yeah. him. He texted me back. He has a bruised bone in his wrist. It's a scaphoid. Good. Um, it's not a broken bone. Um, Great. So Great he seems to think that, uh, you know, he was going to rest and, and hopefully be ready for the President's Cup. He's planning on it. Now, whether he can go or not, we'll have to wait and see. If not, you won't see him until January. So, but uh, he uh, he's planning on trying to be there. I would hope Jim, even if he he's not able to play, and I would imagine he's pretty much going to have to have his arm in a cast for him not to play. Jim's a Jim's a fighter, though. Yeah. I mean, that dude's just built of steel. I, I don't um, know if he'd go. I really don't. I'm yeah. wondering. I'm hoping he would go because I. I, I Jay do would have, have to him. ask him. Jay would have to ask him. Say, and I'd like to have you there. And I do. I do think that's already happened. I do. Uh, there was conversations overheard yesterday around the press tent area and around the players' reception area last night. Uh, Captain Haas was making some comments to a particular individual to make sure that they were available to leave with the team next week. Do we know who? I just I was given a name. Captain. That's a good name. Yeah. And, you know, and we talked about it. I mean, I think Kevin Kisner could have had a chance to do it, but he played so poorly. He did. I think he did. Not to worry about it. Uh, Jeff, you don't need to just humor me for a few seconds. I want There's a couple other golfers on the PGA Tour that I kind of want to highlight their season. Paul Casey. Yeah. Good what a nice back. move coming to the tournament. I mean, coming yeah. to the U.S. to play. Yeah. What, I mean, just for him to turn it around, I mean, but we refer to it behind the scenes as – he, he almost developed the David Duval syndrome. And for him to be able to turn all of this around, get his game back in shape, get his body back in shape, get him mentally back in shape, as you often say, uh, great job, Paul Casey. I mean, 
phenomenal, and I hope we continue to see this in 15, 16 in the wraparound season. Watch out for it next year. Um, I want to highlight Zach Johnson's career, the Open Champion Golfer of the Year. Again, Zach up there in age when you compare him to the young guns. But uh, Zach, again, uh, another ATM on the marketplace, just like Tom Jai Jai D. Um, the guy is just an ATM. He just makes money. So uh, congratulations, Zach, for another phenomenal year. Matt Kuchar had a good year. It's good to see Matt. Matt's one of the nicer guys on tour. Uh, we mentioned Daniel Berger. It's good to see him up there. J.B. Holmes, son, just keep playing golf the way you're playing. Uh, I mean, you're number 11 right now in, in the rankings uh, for the President's Cup qualifier. You might, got, you might not get this trip to South Korea, but trust me, you're being watched closely, closely, closely for that Ryder Cup team. So, you know. Just keep doing what you're doing, young man. Uh, you're going to make it, no doubt about it. And um, Sangman Bay, bless his heart. He's got to do 20 months of military. Well, habit. Ernie said that in his speech the other night. He had to do it, too, in South Africa. Yeah. You know, you just you go do it. And the thing is, if they're smart, like they were with Ernie, he'll get to play golf with the colonels and generals and everybody and work on his game. Oh, he'll be giving a ton of lessons, no yeah, doubt about yeah, it. He'll be a lot sharper when he comes back out. Yeah. So, so uh, he is going to get to play in the President's Club Cup, and then his uh, military uh, period begins for 20 months, and then he'll be back out on tour, and we'll be looking forward to seeing him. Uh, one other individual I want to recognize for the summer, and I kind of got on him during the heat of the summer, uh, especially at the PGA Championship, but that is one Ricky Fowler. He had a phenomenal year. Congratulations, young man. Uh, I hope you use the after the President's Cup before the new season starts up get things uh, personally together and then just hit the ground running and charging because uh, you're doing wonderful things for the game of golf and you're bringing a lot of young people to the game and we need that and uh, without a doubt because without the young people coming into the game of the golf we wouldn't be here doing this what we love to do so uh, hats off to Ricky have another good year next year and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun guys I'm looking forward to it and the President's Cup is going to be fine, of course. We're going to provide you coverage right here on TGD Radio and TGD TV. So we'll be looking forward to doing that. And we're not quite sure of the broadcast times because, frankly, I was talking with uh, Golf Monger the other day, Stefan, and we got to figure out this 21-hour time difference. So uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't know if we need to be up at 2 a.m. or 2 in the afternoon. We have no clue. So well, it's 2 a.m. I'll be sleeping. Yeah, I know you will. So <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we'll pre-record your comments. How about that? Professor, thanks so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to have you. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I learned more sitting here listening to you two guys. It's fun. No, we do, Doug. That's <laughs> it. That's why people, you know, they, they tune in. As to, I had a person tell me the other day, a listener, a viewer, came over to the Performance Center. He says, you're George Honeycutt, aren't you? You're the godfather. I said, yeah. He goes, do you and Q really hate one another? <laughs> the answer to that is no. 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 I told him, I said, I love him like a brother. And I said, that's exactly how we treat one another is like brothers. One minute we're beating the tar out of one another, the next minute we're hugging and swapping spit. So, you know. I could have gone about that last part. You could? Yeah. (laughs) I could have, too. All right. TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, be sure to check out those featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, much, much more. Need help with your next golf vacation? Just call Dave. Give us a call right here at the Golf Director, 844-GO-GOLF-1, 844-464-6531. All of our programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand. To catch any show you may have missed, you can click on the TGD radio or the TGD TV tabs in the menu screen at thegolfdirector.com. We're now available on over 1 billion devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Blueberry, Periscope, Catch.me, that's with a K, Catch.me, and, of course, the Myrtle Beach Golf App. For Gene Weldon, Hugh Roy III, I'm George Honeycutt, and on behind, behalf of Jeff Behind the Glass, we want to thank all of you for tuning in today. There's a lot more golf news and information coming up next.